Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concept, Simply Explained. Part 26, Support Vector Machines Regression. As we stated earlier in episode 23, the goal in SVM regression is to find the hyperplane such that most of the training observations are inside the margin. So let's look at this example. We have X and Y, and we have a bunch of observations, right? So we're going to find this hyperplane, this one, such that most of the observations are inside that margin. And that margin is defined by researchers' tolerance level. We show it in epsilon, right? Then if you ask that, okay, what if some observations in the train set are not inside the margin? Well, we're gonna we're gonna deal with them. We're gonna the, the algorithm is going to give them some slack, but at the same time, it's going to penalize the objective function. So at the end of the day, we're gonna come up with a hyperplane that is going to be our predictive engine, right? So maybe the, if I have this hyperplane, uh, if I want to make prediction for let's say this observation in a test set. The model is going to say, okay, with this value of x, the predicted value for y is going to be this number. So in this episode, part 26, we are going to see what is behind, what is happening behind the scene when we are using support vector machines as regressors. Okay. So for those of you who need some background in support vector machines in general, I highly encourage you to watch episodes from 23 up to 25, because in those episodes, we covered some basic definitions of SVM and we covered SVM classification in details. Okay, so in this class, in this episode, we're gonna cover SVM regression. So let's dig into support vector regressors. The idea of SVM classification can be easily transposed to regression problems. However, the role of the margin is going to be slightly different. Our objective in the regression is to basically find the hyperplane that holds the maximum training observations within the margin epsilon. This margin is our tolerance level. So again, here X, Y, these are the observations. And let's say this green line is our hyperplane and the majority of the observations are within the margin, and a couple of observations here are outside the margin. We're gonna call them slack variables, right? So this is slack variable xi for this observation, this is xi star for this observation, right? So the slack variables are the observations outside of your tolerance mode, mar, uh, level, outside the, uh, the margin. Remember, the slack variables in the classification uh, basically were the observations that are on the wrong side of the margin, right? So we all, we call all those observations on the wrong side of the margin slacks and they penalize them. So the idea is basically the same here. We're going to call the observations outside the margin slack variables and we're going to penalize them in the optimization problem. So let's look into the optimization problem. The SVR optimization is pretty much like the, the optimization that we saw uh, for classification. Well, we are trying to maximize the margin, and maximizing the margin is equivalent to minimizing a monotone function of weights, right? And we said that let's use 1 divided by 2, and that uh, weights to the power of 2. This is just for mathematical convenience, because when we take derivative, it's going to cancel out each other, okay? And the constraints are basically this, you know, all the observations in the train set must be within the margin, right? And that margin is defined by epsilon. So let's say we have to do something like this. For observations, so in this example, for observations above the line, so let's say this is our yi, and this is what the model predicts, right? The model predict that this is our y hat of i. And if this is a functional form for the hyperplane, so the y hat of i is going to be wx plus b, y. So the, the model is going to predict, okay, this is wxi plus b. So here we're going to say that all observations above the line should be within the margin, right? So basically we say this number, this y minus uh, y hat should be less than epsilon, be within the margin. So this is what we're showing here. Y minus y hat should be less than epsilon and y hat is equal to wx plus b, okay? Then the same story for the observations below the hyperplane. So let's say, let's look at this one. So here we have uh, yi 
and this is what the model predict. Now, in this case, y hat minus y should be less than epsilon, right? And y hat is wxi plus b minus y should be less than epsilon. So this, these are our constraints, right? So this is a strict version. Uh, if, you, if you look at this optimization problem, it's analogous to having a hard margin for classification. We are not allowing for any kind of violations um, outside the, the the margin right you're not allowing to see any kind of uh, observations outside the margin so sometimes there is no solution to this optimization problem right so sometimes there is no solution and we have to go from the idea of let's say hard margin to soft margin this is very analogous to what we discussed in classification right and we're going to do that by introducing the slack variables so let's say um, based on this pre-specified level for tolerance epsilon, we do, we want to say okay, this is these observations are also in the in the train set, and so based on that epsilon, there is no way we can satisfy this existing constraint, right? So if there is no solution, we're going to use uh, basically an updated version. Uh, of the SVR, right? We are going to introduce the slack variables here. Let's say this this is what we're going to call psi or xi, and this is let's call it xi star, right? And that's the distance from the margin. So the optimization problem is going to be something like this: we the same function, right? So we are trying to minimize um, one half of w square plus the summation of all the slacks. So in this case, there's only two slacks: so xi and xi star. And we're going to penalize those summation. This is exactly analogous to what we did in soft margin for classification. The constraints are going to be pretty much the same, but now to, we're going to give it some slack, right? We're going to say, okay, anything uh, within the margin plus some slack value is acceptable, okay? So uh, the idea is that because the slack variables allow the regression errors to exist up to the value of F xi and xi star, as, but yet still it satisfies the required condition, okay? So if you've noticed, this optimization problem is very analogous to the SVC, the you know, support vector classifiers, when we were doing soft margins, right? Uh, the tuning parameter C, this is our hyperparameter, is going to do the exact same job. You know, it's going to uh, basically balance the trade-off between bias and variance. So specifically, if C is large, so this means that the model does not allow for a slack, so the slack should be uh, smaller, right? It should be reduced because this is a minimization problem. And this will lead to the, the model become more flexible. So by more flexible model, we're going to get uh, smaller bi bias. But so the model bias is going to be smaller, but the model variance is going to become larger. Okay, and if we decrease C, if we decrease the cost of having observations outside of the margin, then basically we can have more observations outside of the margin. The model is going to become less flexible, the bias is going to increase, and at the same time the variance, the model variance is going to decrease. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna find the right number for C. We're gonna adjust or tune this hyperparameter down the road to come up with a better uh, regressors at the end of the day. There are a couple of other things that are worth mentioning about SVR. Number one is how we can basically interpret that C, right? So we know that C is the hyperparameter. Basically, that's the cost of seeing observation outside of the margin, but we can also think of it as inverse of the regularization parameter, right? Regularization. In the previous lecture, when we talked about penalized regression, uh, we, were, we get to the idea that, okay, if you regularize uh, the parameters of the model uh, so strictly, the model is going to be forced to become less flexible, right? So where do we get the max regularization? So max regularization is going to happen when C is, is, is exactly equal to zero, right? So if C is equal to zero, then we are dealing with max regularization. What does max regularization mean? It means that literally forcing all the coefficients, all the weights to become zero. And if that happens, what will happen to the regression? The regression model is going to become something like this. Okay, so this is going to become our hyperplane and we're going to always predict y bar, right? And on the other hand, if C increase, we can think of it as we are allowing the regularization to decrease, right? Because they are inversely related. If you allow for le less regularization, it means that 
you're allowing for more flexible model. Okay, so just is something neat I want you to think about because in the next slide we're going to see what's the relationship between penalized regressions and SVR in general. So that's one thing. Another thing that I wanted to emphasize is th this, you know, what kind of functional form we can think for the slack variables. In this case, we are simply using L1 norm. So L1 norm, remember, uh, xi and xi star here are positive, so we are just adding some positive number, so it's as if you're looking at L1 norm, so absolute value of, let's say, xi's, summation of the xi's. And, but this doesn't mean that we cannot think of any other functional form. Actually, we can think of the L no, L2 norm, right? We can think of you know, the summation of, basically, xi squares. And this is the, what's used in Python uh, when we're dealing with SVRs. Okay. But I just wanted to let you know that there are different functional forms that you can think for the summation of these slags and how uh, we can interpret the C, you know, uh, how can we connect it with the idea of regularization. Now, what if the data is nonlinear? What if there is nonlinear pattern in the data? So the, the answer is we have to use Kernel trick, right? And then this is very similar to what we did in SVM classification. Uh, let me remind you what we did in part 24 and 26, 25. We said that, okay, for classification, we can start with the hard margin. We call it maximum margin classifier, right? And then we saw that maybe there is no solution to this optimization. We have to extend the idea of hard margin to soft margin. We call it an SVC. And then we said, okay, what if the data is nonlinear, uh, nonlinearly separable? We have to use the kernel trick and we combine it with the soft margin. And the combination we call it SVM. The same story here. We started with the simple SVR. So in, the, in that case, we were not allowing for any slacks, right? We said no slacks, no zi. Then, in order to make sure that there's solution to that optimization problem, we are allowing for slacks, right? So we call them SVR plus slacks, right? We are penalizing them. But at some point, it really doesn't matter uh, what value you choose for C, the, the hyperparameter, uh, because if you allow for more slacks, only the, 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 the hyperplane is going to rotate, right? It's going to rotate, at least in two dimensions, it's going to rotate up and down. But it doesn't help you with uh, somehow bending the, hyper, uh, the curvature, right? So for that, we need to use kernel. So if you use SVR plus kernel, we're going to get the most flexible uh, support vector regressors, right? So that's the idea that we're going to cover here. So let's look at the optimization problem. Uh, let me go ahead and erase these ones for a second. If you pay attention, everything is pretty much the same as we saw in the previous slide optimization, but with one difference, and here's the difference, right? The functional form that we have, basically for our hyperplane, is not simply linear. Right. We, we can say we are not using a linear kernel. We can use different types of kernel, and the kernels are pretty much the same as we covered for classification. You can think of RBF, you can think of polynomial, sigmoid, linear, and etc. Right? And the rest of the optimization is exactly the same. So we are allowing for some slacks um, for both the observations above the hyperplane and below the hyperplane, and we are penalizing those slacks. So here again, we are using L1 norm. Uh, as a functional form for the uh, summation of these slags, right? So then here the goal is to minimize, so to just to sum it up, the goal is to minimize the sum of square of weights. Look at that, sum of square of weights, subject to errors being small enough. So remember guys, these are the errors. This is y hat minus y, or in this case, y minus y hat. So pay attention to this statement carefully. It says that minimizing sum of square of weight subject to the errors being small enough. Does it ring a bell? So this is somewhat the opposite of what we did in penalized uh, linear regressions. Why? Right? Remember there, we were trying to minimize the errors subject to the weights being small enough. Right? So let me remind you of penalized regressions. Remember, in basic linear regression model, what do we have? We are trying to minimize the MSE, right? Or RSS, really doesn't matter. Mean squared error or residual sum of square. So we are minimizing the sum of squares, the errors. In penalized regression, so let's say in lasso, we are minimizing the same objective function, but such that basically the summation of weights, 
is less than a specific number, right? So we don't need to have these ones. It's less than some, let's call it alpha, whatever, some number, okay? And so this was less so. For rich regression, we were minimizing the MSEs such that the, the L2 norm, the summation of weights to the power of two was less than a number. Again, we can call it whatever, beta. So as you can see here, the objective function is kind of inverse. We are minimizing the weights such that the errors are being small enough. So that's why we can think of this you know, C as an in, being inversely related to uh, the regularization parameter. So there is a close relationship between what we do in, uh, you know, in SVR, support vector regression, and penalized regression. All right, so let's wrap up this episode by going over an example showing SVR uh, using both linear and nonlinear kernels. So this is an example that I got from scikit-learn documentation. And imagine there is one feature X and this is our target variable Y, right? And the orange dots are the true observations. So these dots are the true observations. And we want to come up with a regression, a regression line, right? Or regressor. So if you use a linear kernel, the green one, this is a green line. If, if I use a linear kernel plus SVR, so this is what we're going to get. Okay. This is pretty much like our linear regression model, right? Uh, but the objective function is different, and we get to this point differently, right? We get this hyperplane differently. If you use polynomial, as you can guess, uh, for, the, for the kernel, we're going to get some nonlinearity, right? So for polynomial, let's show it with blue. So we're going to get something like this. And if you use the RBF kernel, so we're going to get this, uh, uh, let's say, dark bluish line. And most probably it's going to do a better job. As you can see, by going from linear kernel to polynomial to RBF, in this example, we are making the model more flexible, more complex. right? And by doing that, the bias is going to uh, basically decrease and the variance is going to increase. But the combination of the two for regression is what matters to us, right? The combination is going to be summarized as in a statistical MSE, and we pick the model which has the smallest MSE in the test set. Okay, that's pretty much it. So, so far we've talked about SVM classification, SVM regression, and in the next episode, we're gonna deal with what are the advantages and disadvantages and what are the applications in finance. We're gonna also talk about talking about uh, how can we apply SVM for more than two class classification. Because if you remember, you know, SVM by construction is designed for two class classification. How can we use it for multiple class classification? So these are the topics that I'm going to cover in the next video. Until then, take care.